Chapter 11 The creature came for Will through the sluggish haze of his sleep, a formless creation of his dreams that rose up hauntingly out of the depths of his subconscious. It was a thing of terror, a thing that lurked in the dark recesses of his mind, where he hid his deepest fears. It came for him with stealth and cunning, slipping easily past the obstacles with which he sought to block it. Its motion fluid and quick as it pressed in about him. He could not see it as it as it came, he never would. It lacked substance or identity. It lacked reason. There was only the overwhelming sense of terror it created by its being. He ran from it, of course, ran swiftly through the landscapes of his imagination, ran and ran until it seemed he must surely have left it behind. But he had not. It was there at once, closing swiftly, surely, he lunged from it in desperation, screaming soundlessly for help, anyone's help, but there was no one. He was alone with this thing, and he could not escape it, yet he must, for if it were to reach him, if it were to touch him, he knew with certainty that he would die. So he ran in fear, blindly feeling the breath of the thing hot upon his neck. He came awake with a start lurching upward from beneath the blankets in a sitting position. The night air was cold on his face and body. Sweat ran from beneath his arms, and from within his head he could hear the sound of his heart pounding wildly. Alanon's dark form crouched next to him, strong hands holding fast to all shoulders. The druid's voice was a harsh whisper. Quick, Veilman, they have found us. Will Armsford did not need to ask who it was they had found them, it was his dream become reality. He came to his feet with a bound, grabbing up his blanket and hurrying after the druid, who was already moving toward the little cottage. As if by intuition, the Amberley appeared at the edge of the porch, white nightdress blowing airily about her shoulder, slender form, giving her a ghostly appearance. Elanon went to her at once. I told you to dress, he whispered angrily. She looked unconvinced. You would not seek to trick me, Druid. This would not be the same game you are playing to help me make up my mind to come back with you to Ar Arbalon. Alonon's face went black. Another few minutes of standing around and you will have your answer. Now dress. She stood her ground. Very well, but I cannot leave the children. They must be taken to a place of safety. There is no time. Enough for that. The Druid urged. Besides, it will be safer here than stumbling about in the dark. They will not understand being left like this. Remain and they will share your fate. Elanon's patience was gone. Wake the oldest, tell them that you must go away for a time. That you have no choice. Tell them that when it is light out, to take the others to a neighbor's home. Now do as I say, hurry. This time she did not argue but turned and disappeared back inside the cottage. Will straightened his clothing and rolled his blanket tight. Together, Druid and Valman saddled the horses and brought them around to the front of the darkened home to wait for the elven girl. She was with them almost immediately, dressed in boots, slacks, belted tunic, and a long blue riding cloak. Elanon brought the girl with the Valman close before Artak, whispering softly to the animal, stroking the satin neck. Then he handed the reins to Will. Get on. Will did as he was told, scrambling aboard the big black. Artak shook his head and whisked wicked. Elanon continued to whisper gently, then took Amberley by the waist and swung her up behind the Valman, as if she were no more than a feather's weight. Then he muttered, then he mounted Spitter. Quiet now, he cautioned, not a word. They turned onto the roadway that ran in front of the little cottage and followed it eastward through the sleeping village. Only the sound of their horses' hooves, thudding softly on the earthen trail, broke the deep stillness. In minutes, the buildings of the village were behind them, and they were at the forest's edge. Before them stretched the, the tilled fields, the waters of the irrigation ditches sparkling with moonlight as they crisscrossed through neatly planted rows of grain and corn, already grown and ripening. In the distance, on either side, the wooded slopes of the valley fell away into the grassland. 
Alain dismounted wordlessly. He stood motionless for a time, listening to the silence of the night, his dark face anxious. Finally, he slept close. He stepped close to Artek, motioning for Will and Amberley to bend close. They are all around us, he breathed the words. Will went cold. The druid looked at him as if to measure his worth. Have you ridden and hunt before? Will nodded. Good. You and Amberley will stay with Artek. If you are pressed, give him his head. He will see you safely through this. We will ride north along the edge of the village to where the valley drops into the grasslands. Once there, we will break through their circle. Do not stop for anything. Do you understand? If we become separated, do not turn back. Ride north until you reach the Silver River. If I do not come at once, cross and ride to west and ride west to Arbalon. What will you? Will ask hurriedly. Do not concern yourself with what I might be doing. The druid cut him short. Just do as you are told. Will nodded reluctantly. He did not like the sound of this at all. When Alanon turned away, he glanced back at Amberley. Hold tight, he whispered and tried a quick, and tried a quick smile. She did not smile back. There was undisguised fear in her eyes. Alanon remained, remounted slowly, cautiously. They made their way along the forest's edge, skirting the western borders of the village of Havenstead. Silence hung deep and penetrating across the whole of the valley. Like shadows, they slipped through the darkness of the trees, their eyes searching the night for movement. Ahead of them, the north slope of the valley began to loom up darkly through breaks in the forest. Then Alanon reined in sharply, motioning for them to be still. He pointed wordlessly toward the fields on their left. Will and Amberley followed the line of his arm. At first, there was nothing to be seen, only row upon row of stalk, shaded dark grey in the moonlight. But a moment later, the eyes picked out the quick movement of something vaguely like an animal as it crept from one of the irrigation ditches and disappeared into the stalks of the field. They waited for a time, frozen against the trees, then started forward once more. They had only gone a short distance when from out of the woodlands behind them a deep, souring howl rose. Amberley tightened her grip, grip about Will's waist and put her head against his back. Demon wolves, Elanon spoke the name quietly. They've found our trail. He kicked Spitter's flanks firmly and urged the horse onto a slow trot. Artax snorted anxiously and followed. The howls picked up by others, and there was a sudden sound of bodies plunging through the trees. Ride, Elanon shouted. The horses lunged forward, veering sharply left from the cover of the woodlands, at a gallop. They raced along the edge of the fields, following the line of the irrigation ditch toward the break that led to the grassland. The howling rose all about them, fierce and hungry. Huge leaping shadows sprung above the stalks of grain and, and corn in the darkness on their left, crashing wildly toward them. Will bent low over Artax's neck and urged the big horse on. Before them, the pass leading from the valley came into view. Half a dozen bristling dark forms broke from the woods ahead of them, things that were wolf-like but much larger, and with their faces that appeared grotesquely human as they lifted in the moonlight. Long teeth snapping, Elanon turned spitter directly toward them, blue fire sparking on the fingers of one of his hands as it raised menacingly. An instant later the fire lanced out, burning into the pack, scattering it wildly. Spitter surged through the mist, his call shrill with terror. Artak was already past both druid and demon wolf. His sleek body leveled out as he raced for the open plains. Several dark bodies lunged from out of the field before them. Jaws snapping at the horse's leg, Artak did not slow. He caught one beast with his shoulder and knocked him spinning. The others were quickly left behind. Will bent lower, pulling Amberley down with him against Artak's back. Loosening slightly his grip on the reins. To their right, more demon wolves bolted from the trees, their howls filling the night air. Streaks of blue fire cut through them, and the howls turned to shrieks of pain. Artek ran on. 
Then a single huge demon wolf appeared at the forest's edge, ahead of them, running parallel to the woodland stream that fed the irrigation ditches. It lunged forward to intercept them, moving with astonishing speed, bounding through the long grass, its movements fluid and soundless. Will felt something cold and hard tighten in his chest. The beast was narrowing the gap between them too quickly. They would not escape it. He did the only thing he could think to do. He shouted wildly to Artak and gave him his head. The big black responded. From somewhere deep within, he found new strength. His stride lengthened. The beast was almost upon them, a massive dark terror that seemed to rise up suddenly out of the night beside them. Will closed his eyes and yelled one final time. Artak screamed in response. Gathering himself, the stallion hurtled the woodland stream that lay across his path. Gaining the far bank, he raced from the woodland fields of Havenstead into the open plains beyond. For an instant after, Will's eyes remained closed. Locked tight with fear, he simply clung to Artek's neck, feeling the comforting movement of the great horse beneath them as they fled into the night. When he finally lifted his head once more and risked a quick look behind him, past Amberleaf, huddled form, he found that they were alone. Fire and smoke rose out of the darkness from within the valley, and the air was filled with frenzied yowling. There was no sign of the demon wolves. There was no sign of Alanon. Almost without thinking, Will reined in Artek sharply and wheeled him about. Elanon had been firmed in his instructions. Under no circumstances was he to turn back. Amberley was his first con consideration. She had been given into his safe keeping. She was to be protected at all costs. He glanced quickly at her child face as it rose out of the shadow of his back. Green eyes questioning, he knew what he should do. Yet... He knew that the druid was still back there, probably in trouble. How could he simply leave him and go on? His indecision lasted only a moment. From out of the valley behind them galloped a terrified spitter, wiry grey body, extended in full stride, bent low over his back, black robe bellowing out wildly, his dark figure silhouetted against the horizon, coloured red with fire, was the druid. Close behind ran the demon wolves, their shaggy forms leaping wildly, madly through the tall grass, howling their hatred of the humans who had escaped them. Will turned Artak north instantly and put his heady heels to him. The big black snorted and leaped ahead. The veilman did not give him his head this time, but held him carefully in check. Their chase might be a long one, and the black's great strength was not without its limits. Artek did not fight him, but followed his lead. Running easily, Will bent forward, feeling Amberley's grip about his waist tighten, her face burying it, itself against his back once more. A mile further on, Spitter drew a breath, his heaving body streaked with sweat and dirt, his nostrils flaring. Already he was growing tired. Will glanced anxiously at Elanon, but the druid did not look over. His dark gaze was fixed on the land ahead as he urged his horse on with small movements of his hands. The chase through the grasslands of the Silver River, country wore on with grim determination. The maddening howling of the demon wolves died quickly, changing to the sound, ragged breathing punctuated by snarls of frustration. For the fleeing horsemen, there was only the muffled whistle of the wind and the steady pounding of their hooves, horses' hooves. Through vales, they cut between gently sloping hills and over broad empty rises they, they ran, hunter and hunted, past groves of fruit trees, past solitary oaks and willows, past small window, winding streams of water, all through the silence and dark of the plains. Time slipped away without meaning. They had run nearly a dozen miles. Still the distance between them and their pursuers remained unchanged. At last the silver river slipped into view, a broad ribbon of moonlight water shining out of the dark through big breaks in the low hills that bounded her near, near bank. Will saw the river first and shouted. Artek jumped ahead instantly at the sound of his voice, moving in front of Spitter once more. Belatedly, Will sought to hold him back, but the big black would not be 
curb this time. He was still running easily, smoothly, and he quickly left the tiring spitter behind. The gap between our attack and those who came after widened further. Will was still trying to rein in the black when he caught sight of the, the crouching dark forms that appeared abruptly from out of the night ahead of him. Forms that were bent and twisted and covered with bristling grey hair. Demons. Will felt his stomach tighten. It was a trap. They had been waiting here. Waiting in any case. And he managed to escape from the demon wolves at Havenstead. Now they were spread out all along the banks of the Silver River, closing as the horsemen approached. Artak saw them and veered sharply left toward a small rise. Fifty yards further back, Spitter followed at his lead. Further back still, but closing now on the tiring animal, ran the demon wolves howling once more. Artak gained the summit of the rise at full gallop and broke downward for the Silver River. The demons in front of him moved quickly to bar his passage. Will could see them clearly now, cat-like beasts with faces of women, twisted and grotesque. They bounded toward the big black, mewling hideously, muzzles lifting to reveal their, lung, their long, sharp teeth. At the last second, our attack wheeled sharply and circled back toward the rise, leaving the cat thing screeching with frustration. In that moment, spit atop the rise, Stumbled wearily and went down. Elanon tumbled to the ground in a tangle of ropes, rolled over several times and sprang back to his feet. Demon wolves came at him from all sides, but the blue fire spread from his fingers in a broad, cutting sweep that scattered them like leaves in a strong wind. Artak wheeled left again, Will and Amberley clinging desperately to his back to keep from being thrown, screaming his hatred of the cat things that Thought to trap him, he ran at them once more, parallel now to the river bank, moving to so swiftly that he was on his top of them before they had time to realise what he was about. Several of the beasts reached for him, clawed limbs ripping, but he was past them almost at once, clearing their grasping talons with a mighty leap and racing away into the night. Behind him, an arc of blue fire lanced into the nearest pursuers, burning them to ash. Will glanced back once and saw Elanon still standing atop the rise, demon wolves and cat things alike, closing about him from every direction. Too many. Will heard the word scream through his brain. Fire sprang from the druid's hand and he disappeared in a haze of smoke and dark leaping forms. Then some six cents triggered within the veilman Warning of new danger, his gaze shifted hurriedly from the battle atop of the rise. From out of nowhere, powered half, half a dozen more of the demon wolves, racing toward our tech in great silent bounds. Will felt a quick movement, quick moment of panic. He and Amberley were trapped between the beasts and the river. Ahead of them, a dense stretch of wood blocked their passage. Behind them were the demons that had just fled. There was nowhere for them to go. Artak did not hesitate. He veered toward the river. The wolves came after, soundless, fluid, black terror. Will was sure that this time they would not escape. Elanon was no longer there to help them. They were all alone. The Silver River drew closer. There were no shallows in view, only an open expanse of water too broad, too deep and too swift for them to cross. If they were to try, Will realised, they would most certainly be swept away. Yet our attack did not slow. Whatever the danger might be to them, the big black made his choice. He was going into the river. The demon will sense it as well. Less than a dozen yards back, they threw themselves forward in a determined effort to catch Will and the elven girl. Amberly screamed in warning. 